you are watching on Facebook this morning. We are grateful to have you. Let's give God a big hand of praise. We're going to be great. On this Independent Sunday and this Sunday where we celebrate the Lord's Supper, we are grateful to be in the house with you today. Can you believe that six months of the year have already gone by? Amen. And as Elder Brown shared with us, we can be thankful that we're still here. Amen. Amen. I want to talk this morning from the scripture text of John 14, verses 19 to 20 in the New Living Translation. For those of you who are at home uh, or are watching, I wanted to make sure you know John 14. 19 to 20 in the New Living Translation. And in those of you in the sanctuary, it has a reference to 19 and 20 um, in John 14. Uh, it also, there's more to say, but I'm going to leave it at that, the New Living Translation, where it says, soon the world will no longer see me. This is Jesus talking with his disciples. Uh, they will no longer see me, but you will see me. Since I live, you also will live. When I am raised to life again, you will know that I am in my Father, and that you are in me, and that I am in you. I want to talk this morning from the topic of divine residency divine residency as we come this morning let us pray oh god we come right now in the name of jesus thanking you for who you are thank you for what you do and thank you for the amazing way that you have blessed every one of our lives we are here this morning because you love us and because you stand with us and because we are blessed to stand with you. I pray your blessings, Lord, over all of us under the sound of my voice right now. I thank you for this privilege to be able to stand behind this sacred desk and share the amazing word of God that not only inspires and instructs us, but saves us. I pray, dear God, for the word to be arresting and convicting to every one of us to be able to recognize that we serve an awesome God. We serve the only God. As the, as the song said, the first one said, there's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. We are here, Lord, because of you. And now, as we share in these moments together, we pray that all that we do will be to your glory. I pray your blessings upon the word, upon the hearers, and upon the messenger. In your son Jesus' name we pray. God's people said, God's people said, God's people said, amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand clap of praise as we take our seats. What a joy to be in his house. What a joy to know that we are children of God. Do I have a witness this morning? Part of the scripture that I did not read, but that is in your passage as well, is in verse number 18. Verse number 18, we're reminded that Jesus says to his disciples, and again, in the NIV and in the NLT, it says, I will not leave you orphans. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. And then he shares the rest of his discourse. You see, this is an assurance that Jesus gives to the disciples. It's an assurance that is important by extension to every one of us. When Jesus says, I will not leave you orphans, he says, I will come to you. 
What he was answering and responding to is the disciples fearing that when Jesus leaves, as he has told us he's going to leave, we're concerned, the disciples are, that we don't know what to do. We're concerned about the discipleship program. We're, deter we're concerned about people being healed. We are concerned about whether people will be saved. The discipleship program, as far as they were concerned, wasn't finished. It was just beginning, and if Jesus was leaving, they were saying to themselves, we feel like we are orphans. We feel like the one who has carried us this far, our parent is now gone. And what we need to know today, and I pray that we know, I've got a Bible student here somewhere, some of us were orphans from birth. Come on now. Some of us lived and or have lived in orphanages. I happen to be one of them or in foster care. But here's, here's the important thing. The, the fact that he says, uh, I will not leave you as orphans. In other words, he's saying, I will not abandon you. Jesus is making it clear that you still have my security. You still have my assurance. And it's not as if I am dying because I will die for a certain while and then I'm going to be raised again. I know I've got a witness here somewhere. It's important that when we look at what he's saying, he said, I will not leave you as orphans. He said, in other words, I have told you already that if I go, that I will send you a comforter. Lord, have mercy. Do I have a witness here? That tells us that the Spirit of God shows us that Jesus is alive. You see, that orphan that's left alone, we need to remember that the Spirit draws us close to God's presence. Do I have a witness here? An orphan may have lost their provider, but the Spirit provides all things. I'm going somewhere, y'all. An orphan is left without instruction, but the Spirit teaches us all things. An orphan has no defender, but I came to tell you that the Spirit of God is a protector. Do I have a witness here? He said that I will leave, but I will come back, and I will send the comforter. And in fact, he said that you need not worry, and you need not fear, and you need not be afraid. My friends, as we think about this Independence Day, this is one of the most inflective the Independence Days that we have known in our nation's history during our time. During this time and just this past week, what we have seen is something that could cause one to continue to worry about the strength of our democracy. Worry about the strength of our democracy because on the one hand, we're, some of us are watching the January 6th committee um, and, the, and the witnessing and the, the words that are coming across from that, um, from that committee. We are also looking at the issues that are going on around the nation when we see hate crimes every day. We see the Supreme Court and the decisions that they are making and oftentimes feeling as if somehow we are going in retreat. And what it's causing among the citizenry is this unfortunate divide that you're either here or you're there but we're not together do i have a witness here and i want to say today that i don't care what is going on in the world and i don't care how your feelings may be about the decisions that the supreme court is making that reminds us that our hope should not be in the supreme court our hope should not be in the politics of our land our hope should be in jesus christ i know i've got a witness somewhere what i know is that greater than the supreme court is god himself do i have a witness here and all i know is that jesus remind us that we are not orphans, that we are still being protected, that we are still being taken care of. Do I have a witness here? And that we are still going to be all right. And I hear his words to Joshua when he said, uh, I don't want you to fear at all. I don't want you to be afraid at all. I want you to recognize that as I was with Moses, 
so I'll be with you. He told him, don't fear, don't worry, don't, I, I'll never, he said, I'll never forsake you. I need somebody to know in the 21st century that that same God is saying the same thing to us in the 21st century. Do not fear, do not be afraid. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. But the real question for every one of us is not what Jesus said, but what we do. I'll try that one more time. Because, see, I've got no problem, Pastor Hardy, about what Jesus said. I've got a problem with what we do with the Jesus who has said what he said. What does that mean, preacher? It means that the question for every one of us is really, have you accepted him as your Savior? Have you accepted him in, in residency in your life and in my life? And you see, if you have accepted Jesus Christ as a resident in your life, I came to tell you that he'll never be evicted. He'll never be uh, late on the mortgage payment. He'll never be in position to somehow be kicked out. If you know who Jesus is, you got the best resident that you can have because he Bring the power of the Holy Spirit with it. Somebody said, that's why somebody can listen to what I'm saying and say, Pastor, you're being naive. A lot of craziness is going on around us. I came to tell you, I'm in the midst of the craziness. I'm not running away from the fight. I'm right in the midst of the fight. And I want you to know that being in the midst of the fight means that I'm not going to the fight all by myself. I know that the power of the Holy Spirit is with us in the fight. Do I have a witness here? And not only is the power of the Holy Spirit with us in the fight. The power of the Holy Spirit will see us have the victory. I know there's somebody here who knows that the victory is already won. Do I have a witness here? The victory is already won. Jesus said, I want you to know that I will not leave you. I will not leave you as an orphan. I come to you. What does that mean, preacher? It means that for every one of us, we need to remember that God is saying, I'm standing with my arms wide open. I recognize that the world will try to frighten you. I recognize that the world will try to intimidate you. I recognize that the world will try to turn you away. The world will try to literally overwhelm you. But I came to tell somebody that he has already overwhelmed the world. He has already taken over the world. The world belongs to him because he said it in his word and he said the earth is the Lord's the fullness thereof the world that they that dwell therein somebody asked the question who is this king of glory I'm so glad you asked I know who the king of glory is he's the Lord strong and mighty he's the Lord mighty in battle he is the king and he ought to be taken up residence in every one of our lives can you tell you that he said the world will no longer see him? But he wanted us to know through the discussion that he had with the disciples, the world may not see me, but you'll see me. Can, can, can I just add to that for a minute? I just need an isogenical little statement here for a moment. That means that it may not be sitting here, but it absolutely is inferred here. That means that the world may not see me, but, uh, but you will see me, he says. I just want to part for just a minute and say, not only will the world see not see him, and you and I will, but I came to tell you that the world will not feel him, but we will feel him. Do I have a witness here? We will feel him. We will know that he is absolutely present in our lives. The fact is, that's how you got up this morning. I don't care if you have the alarm clock. I came to tell you that I'm so glad that he commissioned an angel to come down and touch you on the side to say, time to get up and go to church on Sunday morning. Do I have witness here? I'm telling you, it's when you get down and you can't get back up, I want you to know that it's not just about seeing him, it's about feeling him. And because you feel him, you can get up on one foot and get up on the other foot and put one foot in front of the other and you can keep on going to a heavy witness. Now the world doesn't know what they're missing. The world is absolutely inebriated with its own position in life. But I came to tell you that one of these old days, this world is going to pass away. Do I have a witness? But the word says, my word will never pass away. 
He said, when I'm raised to life again, you will know that I'm in my Father, that you're in me, and that I'm in you. Well, you and I weren't present 2,000 years ago, but you and I are here today. And I came to tell you, I know that every one of us has good days and bad days. Every one of us sometimes feels like this is like a motherless child. Some of us feel like we're an orphan. Some of us feel as if nobody cares. Some of us feel like we're living in an absolute nightmare. But I came to tell the church of God everywhere that you need to understand something. Our God is not dead. He is yet alive. Do I have a witness? Our God is not dead. He is alive alive and by the way because he is alive we are alive because he is in his father you are in his father I am in his father and his father is in us do I have a witness here I need somebody to know that he's taking up residence and I beg you today to give him some room in your life I beg you today to provide an opportunity for God to take up residence in your life because here's what I no, everything is not always going to be all right, but you're hooked to the one that is going to make everything all right. I'm a believer that no matter what storm you go through, that God is able to take you through the storm. Do I have a witness here? And in every one of our lives, we're either going into the storm, we're in the middle of the storm, or we're coming out of the storm. But I came to tell somebody, no matter what happens, the one that took you to the storm is the one that will get you through the storm. He will take up residence in your life and in my life. My friends, not only will he take up residence, but he's a permanent resident. Do I have a witness here? He is a permanent resident. What does that mean, preacher? I'm so glad you asked because you see, uh, he's not renting space. Somebody, does, somebody doesn't hear me. He, he's not renting space. The fact is, the space belongs to him. Do I have a witness here? That if it were not for him, we would not have space. If it were not for him, we would not have residency. But I came to tell you that I'm so glad that one day I made a decision to give my life to Jesus Christ. I know there's somebody else here that's happy today that you gave your life to Jesus Christ. And in fact, that the world can't give you what he can. The world can't take away as well and I came to tell you that you can't depend on the on the on the world but you can depend on Jesus Christ the power of the Holy Spirit he said must be because I can't leave until the Holy Spirit comes or the Holy Spirit I'm sorry can't come unless I leave and so here we are today somebody said I feel good about my relationship with Jesus Christ I'm so glad that you do because because of your relationship with Jesus Christ you can deal with the mess of this world because of your relationship with Jesus Christ you can deal with the brokenness of this world because of your relationship with Jesus Christ. You can deal with the brokenness that we deal with in every one of our lives. But I came to tell somebody, you are not an orphan. You are a child of God. You have a father who's taking care of you. Do I have a witness? You have a father that will walk through the storms with you. You have a father who will help you, comfort you, heal you, strengthen you, keep you, and protect you as you deal with the things that we deal with in this world. My friends, I come grateful for his divine residency, grateful for the fact that he doesn't give up on us. Can I give you just a little bit? I said that he's not a renter. Y'all ready? We are the renter. Do, do, do I have a witness here? What do you mean, preacher? Oh yeah, we are the renters here. What do you mean, preacher? One of these old days, one of these old days, the word tells us that this life will be over. We're here 
in residence right now but I'm so grateful to know that one of these days I get a chance as a renter to say finally the landlord's going to say don't worry about anything you're not being evicted you're just headed to better quarters do I have a witness here today that as a renter I know that in this body, in this life, I'm going to deal with, you're going to deal with a whole lot of stuff. But one day, and by and by, nobody knows what is going to happen. What we know is that this old body that we're in, we will leave residency of it. And he said, I've got a better place for you. I've been going and working on it for a long time in John 14. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. And when I go, I will come again and I'll receive you unto myself. Let me be clear. He's the one that owns this residence. He's the one that owns that residence too. Do I have a witness here today? And so for every one of us, I beg you to allow God to be in residence with you, to commune with you, to walk with you, to talk with you, to hear and help you reason as you deal with the issues of life. Life is a complicated thing. Do I have a witness here? And by the way, if you don't know it, just hang out with family and you'll realize how complicated it really is. Do I, I know I've got a witness somewhere. But I also know that the same God that takes up residence will help you and help me with the issues of family, with the issues of work, with the issues of neighborhood, with the issue of our commitment to him. Therefore, let his divine residency be your mantra today. Why is it that you keep smiling in the midst of difficulty? Because I'm not just here by myself. I've got the Holy Spirit right down in here do I have a witness that has taken up residency right in here I can smile because I know that he's the one that has already won the battle do I have a witness I know that he knows what I need I know that he knows how to heal I know that he knows how to put things back together I know that he knows that even in this congregation how many times I've worked with people who have told me that we have a chasm between ourself and our family members I said they said would you please go to I said no I'm not going to talk to them I'm going to talk to the one that can actually get this thing together and I'm so grateful for how many times I can tell you that they have come back and said my brother and I are talking again my son and my daughter we're talking again because we believe that there is power in the residency of Jesus Christ there is power in the residency of the Holy Spirit. There is power in the hope of the future. There is power in the name of Jesus. Do I have a witness here? I heard James say that at the name of Jesus, Satan must flee. And I came to tell you that sometimes part of the reason why we're still stuck and we're broken is that we have not kicked Satan out. I need you to know that Satan is not resident. Satan is a neighbor. Don't allow him to have all kinds of uh, power over you. He is not a resident. Write his eviction notice uh, and tell him that he's got to get out because uh, there's no room for him in your situation. There's no room for him in your relationship. There's no room for him when you head to work. There is no room for him when you go into your neighborhood. There's no room for him when you go to church. Uh, I want you to write him out. Uh, get him out. Uh, evict him. Uh, there is no room uh, for his residency uh, in your life. But I beg you to do this one thing. Uh, make sure that when you kick him out, uh, don't you take up the space. Give that space to the Holy Spirit. Uh, give that space to the Son of God, uh, give that space to the one uh, who is the divine healer, the divine protector, the divine comforter. Give that space uh, to the one that will heal and protect and 
God and every one of us that give us understanding. I come this morning as a dying man to dying men and women, boys and girls to say, if you don't know who Jesus is, I want you to call on him right now. I want you to call on him right now. I want you to call on him right now and allow him to take up residence. I come right now to tell you that when he shows up, uh, he shows up as light. Uh, and if all there is is darkness, the darkness will disappear because light and darkness uh, cannot uh, be in residence with one another. He comes to bring a bright light. Uh, and when he does, I want you to know that you must understand uh, that it will make you do something as well. What's that preacher? I'm so glad you asked. Uh, because you see, when he shows up, he lets you know that you're the salt of the earth. Uh, when he shows up, he lets you know you're the light of the world. And therefore, somebody ought to be able to see your light. And when they see your light, when they see my light, uh, they know that Jesus Christ is present. Do I have a witness here today? And if you've taken up residence in your life, uh, I just want you to stand right where you are and give God some praise because he's worthy to be praised. If you don't know him for himself, I beg you to make room today for him to have residency in your life. Do I have a witness? I came to tell you there's no better residence uh, to be in residency with uh, than in Christ Jesus. Do I have a witness here? I know that somebody knows what I'm talking about. Come what may, he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. I'm just about done, but I need you to know that he's worthy. Do I have a witness? He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. For those of you who are here in the sanctuary and those who are at home, it's time that we share in the Lord's Supper today. When we share in the Lord's Supper, we are sharing something that is so important and so sacred that it's called the sacrament in the church. This sacrament of the Lord's Supper reminds us of his death and his suffering just for you and me. And the fact is that when he did this, he said, do this in remembrance of me. If you're at home, you may not have all the elements that we have here, but I would ask everybody here that if you have not received your communion cup, I ask you to raise your hand so that the ministers can come around. The ministers can come around. The ministers can come around and help you and to serve you in a very important moment like this. So the ministers, please make sure that you get the communion uh, cups. Raise your hand, if you will, high if you don't have your communion cup and know that we are here to serve you and to make sure that you have what you need in this moment to be able to share in the Lord's Supper with us. We pray that you will do that and at home, whatever you need as part, rather as replica of the body of Christ and the cup, which is the blood of Christ, that you will get that and be prepared to share this very important sacrament with us. As we come, let us pray. Oh God, we come in the name of Jesus to thank you for this moment. Thank you for being resident in our lives. And thank you for loving us so much that you're willing to die for us on the cross, but you got up on the third day morning. We pray your blessings over this bread. We pray your blessings over the cup. We pray your blessings over everyone under the sound of my voice and ask you, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus, that you will cleanse us from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet. Give us a fresh anointing and let us walk in that anointing. We pray your blessings now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. My friends, in the Matthew account on that same night that Jesus 
was in the upper room with his disciples. He had already shared the Passover meal. History tells us that after sharing the Passover meal, that he did what he had told the disciples he would do, and that is that he would go away, and that as a result of his going away, he would come back again because he had victory over death. Today as we come and share, we remember the words in the Matthew account which reminds us that he took the bread and he blessed it and he said, this is my body which is being offered for you. The Bible says that by the same manner he took the cup, therefore he blessed it and reminded them that there was no remission of sin without the spilling of blood. This cup represents his blood that he shed for you and me. In that same account, it says that after they'd eaten the bread and they drank the cup, they sang a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. The ministers will come around and they will pick up your cup, if you will, make sure to prepare it, and then the ushers will come and prepare for our tithes and our offering. God bless you this morning. Department of Internal Revenue. 